Hello there everyone, Ash and Flash here and welcome on in to a early LEGO Marvel Super Heroes set review. Today we are looking at the Infinity Saga set, set number 76216, the Iron Man Armory. This set will be retailing for $89.99 USD or $119.99 Canadian beginning on June the 1st everywhere in the world. This was actually sent to me early by LEGO Slash Land to do a review for and there's a lot of positives to say about this set and a lot of negative things to say about this set. And I think that the most negative thing being the price for this. It's hard not to compare this set to the other Avengers Endgame Iron Man Armory set, which we will do a separate video actually doing a comparison video of. And with that set, it actually had a total of 524 pieces retailing for $59.99 USD or $79.99 Canadian. This set has a total of 496 pieces. That's less pieces than the other set. Granted, it does have more minifigures and potentially a licensing here in the back, but that's pretty crazy in comparison. So let's go ahead. Let's jump into things. If you are interested in that comparison video, again, it will be up very shortly after this. But there's also chapters if you want to hop around to actually check out the different side builds and the minifigures and all that, as well as the outro. I just sort of sum up just all of the different positives and negatives about this set. So be sure to check that out before you click off the video. But let's go ahead. Let's get started. Here is the display part here for the set. Now, it's quite interesting because... This is a brand new design for this. They changed it up from 2019, and we did get a follow-up to that, and that used the same design. However, this is a brand new one, and parts of it I really love, and other parts of it I really don't like. The main thing here, you of course take your minifigure, and you could place it different ways. You can take the minifigure there, your Iron Man figures, and you could display them throughout here. And the height of it, I don't like. What I mean by the height, I don't mind that they're stacking and all that. That's really cool. I'll show you that in a second, how you can take it apart. It's that the figure, there's just such a huge gap there between the ground and this. The suits in the movie come very close to the very top. So in a lot of ways, this just doesn't really work. And what you do is you take the holograms, which again, you'll see in a second up close, but we're going to take the Mark 1 one and we're going to put it right on inside there. And it unlike the past ones, actually acts as like a stand-in for the suit. So while the Mark I never had a sticker in the original one, which was the set that this first appeared in, it is a different format. This sticker before was on the back window pane, which then allowed you to take that figure and stand it in front. Here, you can't do that. That is standing where the minifigure is supposed to go which I absolutely hate. And now I need to get another one of these sets because I want to take these stickers and put them on the other display and actually have the sticker in behind there because that's one of the coolest parts and which is one of the things that I love about this and the stickers that were included is that it went back and completed those suits that never had those stickers with the details and all that. So the fact that you can't put a figure in there is beyond frustrating. The other things included in the set that you could display um, here besides minifigures is, again, these little side builds, which uh, one of them here you put there. And you take the connection piece there, the neck attachment, and you just attach it on there. It doesn't sit very strongly. It's loose there. And the other thing as well is just like the other Hall of Armor, you can actually separate it and make it a much larger version here. So you could take them and actually display it this way. Now, however, in the movie, there's actually only a total of seven of them. So I'm gonna remove the one side one here on the end, and this is actually what it would look like if you're wanting to have it be more accurate. Now, of course, if you were to get multiple of them, you can continue to go up. I don't know, someone could do the math uh, to figure out how many of these you'd actually need to display all the Lego Iron Mans that we've ever gotten. Technically, there is 42 suits in the movie, which means that you need to buy a total of six of these because it goes in 5.25 times into 42 because eight goes into 42 five and a quarter times. So anyways, math there. Uh, regardless, this is what it would look like here if you were to have to build up because there's only seven of them. So you go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all the way across. 
these little top parts here, they almost act as a reinforcement to actually connect it because there is no connection there at the top. They just sort of sit there only connected at the bottom, which makes this a little more flimsy, I believe, than the last one. But again, what you could do is you could take that and actually just attach it there in the center. And here's the centerpiece here for his workshop, and uh, you can put him there in the center, sort of have the different suits call to him, like we see, of course, in Iron Man 3. I, I really love the design of this, the different stair levels there. You could even have, of course, him walking up uh, on the one stud there included on each side. In the center there, you do actually have a dish piece in uh, transparent blue, which I think looks awesome. With the holograms, I do want to just show you, it it's not the easiest to get out. You kind of have to grab from the ingot, but then you ruin how it's actually being displayed but uh, you do actually get a total of three different uh, little holograms uh, one of them here being for the mark one it's under reconstruction we have plans for the mark 25 the silver centurion which uh, actually was the promo for lego marvel avengers when you pre-ordered that which is awesome to see there it's also using the new helmet so technically it's not uh, the same hologram for that earlier design and then here we have one for just him studying nanotech and how he's going to use that in the mark 85 now, these can't stand up straight on their own, so I had to put them back here on the table. But uh, like I said before, this just sits on there so loosely, like the slightest little touch and it'll fall off. So I don't really like that. Uh, this, however, you've got a fire extinguisher as well as uh, the new stud shooter, which actually shoots out, uh, if this decides to work, it shoots out a flat, transparent, light blue stud. That's what that looks like from the different sides. Here is probably one of my favorite parts about the set this is actually the table where he has on display the whole little mini model of the stark expo of course this is this whole set is really based off of iron man 2 it has the most references to that it is just absolutely incredible there just the design and on the box they actually have this piece here flipped upside down or maybe it's that one it makes no sense but you could see how the roads and everything intersect there and i just love these pieces and they're very easily removed because they are on this table meant to be uh, actually easily removed um, and this table design you'll see return in a second but the reason that i'm saying it's easily removed is because here with the car which is meant to be, I believe, the Audi R8. What you could do is, like you see in the movie, you actually take uh, the different parts here of the model and you could stick them in the back of the car and uh, drive off with them there, which I think is really cool, uh, the fact that they included that. And uh, you could see on the inside there how they're sitting there in the back of that little windscreen piece. But I'm not a Speed Champions guy, but building this... I definitely saw the appeal. And again, I, I'm not sure. This is sort of like an unlicensed version of the Audi R8, but like it looks great. Uh, you could see in the back, we've got a license plate with Stark 11. I like just the whole design there for the exhaust. Uh, the wheels drive very smoothly. The front part of the car and just how that's built is really awesome. I gotta say, like, it definitely piqued my interest in Speed Champions. I'm gonna remove this here just so you can see on that uh, one by two cheese slope, there's actually a sticker there of the speed dial there. And then you can take Tony, and of course, cinnamon inside there. It would have been cute if there was a basket of strawberries included with this. Um, but uh, other than that, I, I think that just the fact that the maps here included is crazy. Like I said before, that table design would return. We've got another table included for his workshop. Uh, this one actually has a couple of different blueprints, which we'll take a closer look at in a second once we're done with this. But here you could see on the holograms that there's these different things, different scans being done on the different Iron Man suits. This one specifically being on the Mark III. And uh, what you're meant to do is you can actually take the Mark III completely apart and you take the torso and you actually attach it here to this black minifigure head. And then you take this other side part and you attach it on the bottom and it's meant to be like him, I guess, just working on this, like it's a work in progress. Um, and then you can just sort of put uh, the minifigure helmet there uh, if you want there, the minifigure legs just separately or in the Hall of Armor. But yeah, they're, they're, that's specifically what this part is meant to be. 
here are those blueprints that I was talking about before, and it's really awesome. Like, the the different things that are being referenced here. One of them here is the new uh, element, I believe, the arc reactor. And you've got a number there. Again, I'm assuming that's probably someone's birth date. It ends in 84. The other thing up here as well is actually, uh, again, another birth date, I would assume. Maybe, uh, maybe someone's kid in 2019. This is Captain America's shield, the prototype that we see Coulson actually holding. Would have been great to have the shield, but the fact that there's a blueprint here with also the Stark Industry logo there on the bottom right of both of them, I think that's pretty cool. And here's the little workbench included in the set. And you've got uh, four different drawers here, which uh, can all be opened. Oh, I'm opening up the wrong way. Um, there's nothing stored inside. You could store some of the different tools if you want to, or like the uh, little micro figure here that's on top um that is disappointing like we actually have iron man printing on these little micro figures from i think it was the uh, no the advent calendar didn't have it the other hall of armor had it and it also appeared in another set so like include that uh we also have i think that's meant to be like the arc reactor him sort of trying to discover the new element we've got the wrench as well as like a drill also included in the set is this thing um i i don't really know what it is meant to be. Maybe a sander or something. You've got a little lamp there that can be angled up and down. I like the little wheels there, I guess. Uh, maybe they're not wheels, just feet that uh, the workbench is standing on. Then we've got this piece here. I think what you do is you actually, uh, you twist this there and it actually moves up and down. If I recall what this, like, actual tool is i'm not sure let me know down below i read the description i couldn't find anything but i like the build of it i think that it looks great and here's i think this is not dummy like i said in the reveal video i think that this is meant to be one of the tools actually removing parts of the suit from iron man one how he's just like they're they're just trying everything i think you can put the saw here but uh to sort of cut him out of the suit uh but yeah i think that the build is really good there's a lot of articulation there that you sort of even see in the movie and if you were to get again multiple of these sets you could sort of have them trying to remove the suit off him if you had a bunch of these so yeah i, I think the build for that's great and here is anthony stark and it's a shame that, technically speaking, this outfit is from the Avengers. We saw it in the What If set. It's the uh, sort of Metallica knockoff Lego branded shirt uh, from that set. This whole figure is the exact same that we got there. He has the spiky hair here in black. And if I were to remove that there, you could see his face. He's got just this normal expression. And then he's got the heads up display and this angry expression there on the back. Now we're going to go in order of the suits and starting things off here we have the Mark III. This is not the Mark IV, which is beyond disappointing. This is an Iron Man 2 set. It would have been great to get the Mark IV, which we are still waiting for. I think that's actually the final one in the first seven suits that we need, with the exception of the Mark II, which is sort of uh, up for debate. But anyways, this suit here. Like the torso, the legs, it's great. We saw that back from last year with the Infinity Saga wave launching with the Iron Man set from 2008. Looks awesome. But you're here for the new helmet, I'm sure. I don't like this thing. I understand maybe the versatility of it. And I think that it's sort of this combination of the old helmet and that comic book one, which we will be doing another separate video actually comparing the three helmets. But what's going on here is that... It looks so long and tall. And again, I think that the shape of it, I don't necessarily mind. I think that it looks pretty cool, uh, especially here, just the whole design and the engraving of that. I think that all looks cool. And just how the helmet actually attaches. And the most important thing, of course, that a lot of people missed for a bit was the fact that the helmet didn't lift up the visor. It does here. However, it looks so tall now you see here the transparent blue head i'm gonna swap that out. look at that like look how much of a like difference there is between where his head ends and where the helmet actually ends that is such a huge gap there like it just makes his head look so weird from the side it, it looks so off like it's like the helmet's floating. I, I, You know what I mean there? Like, that should be a lot lower, which the uh, original version from 2012 is. However, like, closing it up, it looks fine. You do have to push a bit to actually snap it in place. But again, even just the printing here on the front, while it looks fine, I guess, it just doesn't have the same detail that you would expect and have come to love with, like, the original one. Here is the War Machine Mark I. Now, technically speaking, this is also the Iron Man 
Mark II. Uh, but this is not, before you comment, this is not the same suit that we got uh, from the Iron Man 3 set back in 2013. It is a different one. This is from Iron Man 2. You could see from the arc reactor. Um, and it's great to get here for the first time. I really think that the torso printing, the leg printing, all that's really awesome. The helmet printing, however, again, it just looks really tall. Really, really tall, really elongated, like that gap between the eyes and the, the the facial slit there. I don't know, something looks off. I think it's interesting that they're using the same a little mounted turret build there that we saw back in 2013 when we first got War Machine. Um, but just to show you here, flipping this up, you could see the face underneath. If you don't recognize that, that is actually a brand new face. Not for War Machine, but it actually first appeared technically, because the book released first, for Val Zod in the DC Superheroes book. So, like I said, they were going to reuse it. I didn't expect it so soon. But they don't have a back head printing, which I really don't like, because the War Machine roadie head that we had was perfect. It had the heads-up display. Now it's gone. Like, Tony's using the same head since 2019. Why can't Rhodey? But here's the back torso printing. Here is the Mark 25, the Striker suit, which was first referenced back in the original Hall of Armor, which is awesome to see here. The helmet, though, looking at it here, look at the eyes. To me, it looks like it's just gray, but they're actually this light blue, which depending on the angle you could see, it just, I don't think that it really works that color there. I think that it should have just been like a bright blue or something, or maybe they're trying to, it just came across that way on uh, the gunmetal gray helmet. I think that the helmet piece actually works really well for this suit, I don't know what it is. I think it's just maybe the detail there sort of fills in the gap between the eyes. I like the additional printing that they're able to do there on the top. Again, you could see why this helmet exists. Just, I don't know, maybe it'll take some adjusting. But uh, the neck attachment piece, that's actually the Praetorian Guard armor neck attachment in dark yellow, looks awesome. Love the back torso printing. And the piece build here for the um, sort of the striker gauntlets is awesome it's using the ghostbusters piece with the ingot there in dark yellow with a uh, actual tile on the end with the little pyramid pieces or i guess not a pyramid more of a, a triangle piece which looks awesome now i'm going to remove that just so you can actually see the uh, leg printing and the torso printing when it's not covered up and flipping this up you've got the transparent head but i know a lot of you want to see with the heads up display and that's what it looks like there again really really tall but uh Overall, just so glad to have this suit, regardless of the new helmet, whatever, we have this suit finally. Here's the Iron Man Mark 85 suit, the very final Iron Man suit. And you could see here why this helmet exists. It's so that you can actually print it in different ways, like the different points there. And just the whole shape of this helmet is so different to the one here from the Mark III. And all the other respective suits, like when that original helmet was created, it was for the Mark VI and the Mark VII. However, not all Iron Man helmets are the same, but having it be actually printed, like the facial slit, instead of having it be molded into the helmet, uh, like the original one, in that aspect, it works quite well with this suit. Uh, now, the rest of the torso and the leg printing, nothing new that appeared in the Endgame sets from last year. We've also got this back uh, neck attachment here using the Outrider piece, uh, where you can sort of just angle these if you want different ways. Um, and th that's fine. It's the nanotech that's included. Um, and when I was taking uh, the neck attachment off, I also swapped out the head here so you could see what it looks like with the visor on with uh, this suit, if you haven't seen that yet. Now, I also almost forgot, but there is a little bit more of, uh, I guess, the technology included with this suit. We've got, like, this sort of hologram projection. He made a shield. He's also got, like, this blade, whether or not that's a repulsor sort of blade or if he actually made this. I think he did since the handle piece is dark gray. But I think that's cool and to include. Here is Pepper Potts. She's got the exact same torso, same Hermione face, same hair piece, all used from last year's Infinity Saga set from the Iron Monger Mayhem set, which I, I guess it's fine, but it would have been cool to have like her Iron Man 3 outfit return or something like that. But uh, that, there's the back torso printing. Here is Nick Fury. And my biggest criticism is that he's just becoming like the legacy Kai of... Marvel, where he's just appearing in so many sets. Like, I remember when this was exclusive to the Far From Home big set, and that was a big draw, was you had to get the jet to get the new cool Nick Fury, and now he's just in everything. And it just, I don't know. He doesn't even step foot in 
the actual Hall of Armor or the workshop, which I guess you could say is the same with a couple of other characters. But with the Infinity Saga and specifically with Cap Shield, like how great would it have been to get Coulson back here? And it's been so long since we've had a minifigure of him. Regardless, anyways, like it's a perfect figure. I love the new head printing there with the eye patch with a little bit of the uh, shading. You got the scarring and everything, as well as uh, I think this torso is a bit scuffed up there. You can see it on uh, how he's got a scratch there. But regardless, you've got a shield logo there and uh, the trench coat piece that's used for Star Wars and Harry Potter and the back. Uh, head printing as well as the torso really wish that uh, the eye patch went all the way around and actually connected and here is Ivan Vanko Whiplash, which I cannot believe we got in this set I'm so glad all the other sets with the villains. They just had like Generic sort of enemies. So they had the outriders and then the aim enemies So the fact that we have a named villain here is awesome. I love the uh, chain pieces here for the whips I think that works really well uh, the Praetorian guard piece in silver is awesome I think the helmet printing as well using the comic book helmet I think looks incredible the torso printing the leg printing like this is such like this figure I, I think using that helmet and everything, it's a perfect figure here. Uh, looking at it with the helmet on, the back torso printing is really awesome. However, when you take this off, he's got like the regular light flesh tone, which I just would never use for him. He's He has such a darker skin color, as well as just looking at what other toy companies do. It's just really off here. And uh, I, I think that it's, it make, they should have used maybe even the Dinjarin new skin color, just anything but this. I, I don't think that this works at all. The face works, like the printing looks awesome. I love the facial expression there. It looks incredible. I love how he's got that smile and how it's sort of closing his eye. Also using the Kanan hair piece here, returning is awesome. Probably see that later on in the summer, I, I assume with the Sanctum. Then you've got this angry expression there as well. Like this was just so close to being perfect. Well, there you have it, everyone. That is my long review of the Iron Man Armory set from the Infinity Saga. Oh, my goodness. Just to recap, some of my gripes about this is just the fact that it's a new design for the Hall of Armor. It doesn't match up with the last two that have been able to be connected. And, again, we'll try and connect it in another video, comparing it to that. But I just also think that the whole design of it, it doesn't work. I, I look at the description of the set and they use the phrase authentic three times throughout the description. This isn't authentic. Like, that's clearly not authentic when there's such a huge gap. And then also the holograms are so disappointing. I was so looking forward to being able to put those in with the other Hall of Armor. Now I can't because they are on these window screen pieces and not the actual back part of the display. The figures here, while you're getting more in this set compared to the first one, some of them are just like, okay, like Nick Fury and Pepper and Tony, like it's just sort of lazy inclusions. And same with the Iron Man suits actually included. We're only getting one new suit being the striker suit and great to have War Machine as well, but then they messed up the face. Like then with Whiplash and oh my goodness and everything else that I've said about this unbalances the positives that we're getting here like all the cool references to Iron Man 2 the price and everything else that I just said is weighing the set down and I think that's going to be really hard for people to look past is that horrible price for this but I'd love to hear your thoughts what do you think of this set what do you think of the new helmet again I think for the new suit, which is really all that I care about, I think that it works. But I am concerned for the future of Iron Man and using that piece. But anyways, everyone, I hope you guys did enjoy the video. Stay tuned for those two videos that I talked about here with the comparison as well as the Iron Man helmets comparison. Hope you guys did enjoy the video. Hope you all have a great day. I will see you all in the next one.